There it is, Canada. Maybe they'll let us in another day. Not now. USA's that way. I'll go that way. I am all suited up. I'm ready to go. The bike is all packed. This bike is my dream bike and I developed it in conjunction with Priority Bicycles. If you want to learn more about it, click the link in the description of this video. I don't know if it's nervous energy or excited energy or a mix of both, but I, I'm just kind of walking in circles, making sure I have everything ready and everything set. And uh, I do, and I should just be out on my bike right now. I just called my mom to tell her I love her one last time. She's like, you called me already. <laughs> this is a dream come true. I've wanted to do the divide ride for about 10 years now. Just in case some of you don't know what the Great Divide is, it's the world's longest off-road bike route at 2,700 miles. It starts in Banff, Canada and goes to the border of Mexico. Right now, Canada won't let us dirty Americans in their country, so I'm starting in Northern Montana. You might be thinking, oh, Ryan can just get up and go and it doesn't phase him and he just rides and he sings Olay all the time and he's all good. Well, the truth is, you know, I get nervous like anybody else. This is, this is big. <laughs> I think my jitters mean that my body is getting ready for something amazing. At least that's how I want to think about it. And I look back on the first day of my Honduras ride, my first ever bike packing adventure and how excited and nervous I was. I feel good, I've said my goodbyes. I've shedded my tears. I got my goodbyes, got my hugs, everything. I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to start the adventure. And then the first day of my first cross country ride across the USA and I had the same feelings like, oh my God, I'm here, this is happening. This is really what's gonna propel me, not my legs. It's this thing is gonna take me across America. Woo! I mean, there's so many months that go into preparing and thinking and buying gear and getting every, everything set and staring at maps and then boom, here I am. <laughs> now it's go time. I'm not in the comfort of my home. And speaking of my comfortable home, you know, I've been in quarantine since early March, essentially. Quarantine was very comfortable. I ate good food and watched Netflix every night. <laughs> but it's time to get uncomfortable. It's time to push it. It's time to explore. It's time to be on the edge of comfort. And uh, I like that. That's when I feel most alive. And that's, I think, why I'm feeling a little bit nervous and scared and excited. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's not going to be easy. I'm not going to be sitting at home watching Netflix. I'm going to be riding my bike all day, every day, up and down big mountains. <laughs> I'm in grizzly country. There's bears out there. I have bear spray with me just in case. That's kind of scary, you know? <laughs> I know that this is kind of a boring way to start a video for a really big ride, but this is how it happens. I sit in a hotel and I pace back and forth before I finally get the courage to walk out the door. Um, and I thank you all so much for your love and support in watching my channel, and I'm so excited to share this with you. It means the world to me that not only do I get to experience this, but then I get to share it with you and hopefully inspire you to challenge yourself with whatever adventure you choose in life. All right, I think it's time to leave now. <laughs> or I could just lay back and take a nap. No, I'm not gonna take a nap, let's go. I've made progress. I am outside of the hotel, <laughs> about to get on my bike, and I already feel a lot better. Oh, it's gonna be a beautiful day. And you know how we start these things in Doozer land? No crashies, no flatties, no whammies, baby. All right, now I'm feeling awesome. <laughs> All it takes is a few miles of riding. And then I'm like, oh yeah, this is why I do this. Look at this beautiful road, no cars. One of the reasons why I'm so attracted to this route is that it's mostly off-road. 
which means not many cars. Ah, so I can breathe easy and just enjoy the riding and not worry about getting run over by a semi. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful day. Woo, yes, it's happening. <laughs> pedaling hard and making big miles, but I also like stopping and reading these historical markers just to get a sense of the history of the area and where I'm riding through. And this one's pretty interesting. It says, three times a year, the Kootenai Knutaksa Indians departed their Tobacco Valley homeland and crossed into the drainage of the North Fork of the Flathead River. The Native Americans rode and packed as many as 700 horses for the spring hunts when the whole village made the journey. The meat and all supplies were carried on their backs for the return trips. Here I am thinking I have a lot of stuff on my bike. I can't imagine carrying all of that meat on the back of horses. Wow. <laughs> I finally hit dirt about 20 miles south of Eureka. This is what I came for. Dirt roads, solitude, simplicity, remote beauty. It all starts now. All I gotta do is pedal. And that's really all I have to do. I have to wake up every day and pedal my bike. And I'm incredibly grateful for that. It doesn't get much more simple than that. I also have to find water and food and film all of this for you. But for the most part, I am just pedaling every day. That is a dream come true. Oh, and I get asked a lot about how I know where to go. Well, it's quite simple, really. I've downloaded the GPS file of the entire route onto my Wahoo computer, and it tells me exactly where to go. It's like using Google Maps on your phone. If I go off route by as little as 15 feet, it'll let me know which is very nice peace of mind. This is, this is some new technology for me. I used to use maps like everybody else used to use, but it's nice just uh, having this little computer tell me what to do. As long as I keep it charged. If it goes dead, then we're gonna have problems. <laughs> It is time to use my magic wand and filter some water. You just dip it in there and it magically filters and kills all virus and bacteria. Actually, not magically, it shoots UV light into it. It's how they filter water at big, you know, water filtration projects for cities. It's also nice just to get off the bike and sit next to a river. The sound is very soothing. It's not even noon yet, and I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> oh, I love it. As I head further and further into the outback, I'm starting to see signs that tell you to be beware of bears, grizzly bears and black bears. I've only ridden my bike once through bear country in Wyoming for only a couple days. But a lot of this route is gonna be through bear country. And that is why I have a canister of bear spray right here, pepper spray. I hope I don't have to use it, um, but definitely it's nice to have it as peace of mind. And at nighttime, I'm gonna to have to get my food up high. I know bears love refried beans. <laughs> Everybody does, not just bears. Yeah, here we go into the wilds of Montana. You know, back in Colorado the past few weeks, it's been high 90s, almost 100 every single day, which is hot. But out here, it's perfect. It's like 75, it couldn't be better. 
I found some of that uphill that this route is so famous for. 200,000 feet of uphill during the entire route. But that also means there's probably 200,000 feet of downhill, which is awesome. So yeah, you, you know, you put your head down and you pedal hard, you go up, and then you get to enjoy a screaming fast downhill. I say that's a fair deal, you know? nice stretch of road right here. I feel like the trees are hugging me. Whoa, these mountains are different. We don't have these kind of mountains in Colorado. I think I'm looking at the southern end of the Canadian Rockies. They look kind of European, really tall and jagged and there's still snow way up there. Oh man. You know what I just realized? I am very, very clean right now. It's like I'm wearing my first day of school clothes. All spick and span, look how white the shorts. I'm not muddy and dusted up yet. That'll happen. And I think it's kind of a badge of honor when it does happen. And by the end of this tour, I'll be looking a little rougher, which is cool. Uh-oh. We've got one of those steep uphill swings. <laughs> and I've already gone up 5,000 feet today. Whoa, 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 look at that. I got to the top of the hill, started looking at this mountain that was distracting me and didn't even notice there was this beautiful alpine lake right here. Oh my God, it is. It is a beautiful lake, wow. You wanna know what one of the added bonuses to riding in the north is in the summertime? It stays light out really late. It's been a beautiful, beautiful day. Today was to make it to a lake and camp and I've done it. I didn't think I was gonna get this far though. I'm in Whitefish. So I rode like 95 miles today and I got a pretty late start, but I just kept cruising. I was extra inspired today. Not only by it being the first day of the ride, but just by the landscapes and the surroundings and just so beautiful. So if this first day is any sign of what's to come, I think I'm in good shape. This is, uh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be really good. Surprisingly, my legs are doing pretty good and I climbed like almost 6,000 feet total throughout the day. But you know what hurts right here? It hurts because I've been smiling so much. <laughs> it was one of those days where I was just like, woo, this is great. <laughs> 